for ET LO2 pressurization. Starting now the retraction of the gaseous oxygen vent arm, the vent hood. TLT OTC, clear caution warning memory, verify no unexpected errors. Fuel cells going to internal, external tank camera being activated at this time. OTC, PLT, no unexpected errors. Happy that. Flight crew, OTC, close and lock your visors and initiate O2 flow. That's it, Mark. T minus two minutes. Yeah, let's just stay for ET, LH2, pressurization. Solid rocket booster cameras being activated. He might as Sound suppression water system is being armed. T minus one minute. Oxygen and liquid hydrogen fill and drain valves are closed. T minus 40 seconds, handing off to Atlantis' computers at T minus 31. T minus 35, 33. Clock will hold at T minus 31 seconds due to a failure. And we have had a failure. Grand lock sequencer. We have a problem on the dog's retract switches. NATDSC, go ahead. Yes, sir, we need uh, guys to go do the verification for the LCC, please. All right, CMAC. Yes, CMAC, the LCC says we need to verify using a camera, and we're positioning camera 62 right now. Okay, let us know as soon as 62 is swung over, and you can verify LCC for GVA retract, please. And all personnel, we're holding here 31 seconds while we get a verification that the GVA has fully retracted for our pre-plan. This is CMEC. We verify uh, retracted. Okay, and you can verify that it is fully retracted per the, uh, the instructions that we've been uh, that we developed, correct? That's correct. All right, and STE? And NTD, STE concurs. They satisfy the requirements of GSC 13 pre pocket contingency. I'm go. Okay, I copy. And launch director. Yes, sir, I heard all that and concur. Press on. All right, very good. NTD, ST. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, I need concurrence to GLS and ask to clear the hold, please. Very good. And GLS, do you have concurrence? Go. I see that. It's at work. Thank you. Let us know when that's complete. Do we have it in work? All right, guidance. And just a reminder for folks, our uh, lock turn back hold time is 3 minutes and 16 seconds. MTD, CTLS on 212, we're ready to go. All right, very good. And launch director, with that cleanup, we're going to go ahead and proceed. Yes, sir. Please do. All right. And all personnel, we are going to pick up the clock here momentarily. And GLS, you can resume the clock on your mark. I copy that. Countdown clock will resume on my mark. Three, two, one, mark. He might have... Go for auto sequence start. Hand off to Atlantis' as computers has occurred. Solid rocket booster nozzle steering check and work. 20. Firing chain is armed. 15. 
go for main engine start. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. All three engines up and burning. 2, 1, 0, and liftoff, the final liftoff of Atlantis on the shoulders of the space shuttle. America will continue the dream. Roger roll, Atlantis. Houston now controlling the flight of Atlantis. The space shuttle spreads its wings one final time for the start of a sentimental journey into history. 24 seconds into the flight, roll program complete. Atlantis now heads down, wings level on the proper alignment for its eight and a half minute ride to orbit. Four and a half million pounds of hardware and humans taking aim on the International Space Station. 40 seconds into the flight, the three liquid fuel main engines throttling back to 72% of rated performance in the bucket, reducing stress on the shuttle as it goes transonic for the final time. Engines now revving up, standing by for the throttle up call. from Capcom Barry Wilmore, a transducer, instrumentation only, no action required. Atlantis now 15 miles in altitude, already 16 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center, one minute, 40 seconds into the flight. Atlantis flexing its muscles one final time. Atlantis traveling almost 2,600 miles an hour, 21 miles in altitude, 24 miles downrange. Standing by for solid rocket booster separation. Booster officer confirms staging a good solid rocket booster separation. Guidance now converging. The main engine steering the shuttle on a pinpoint path to its preliminary orbit. Two minutes, 20 seconds into the flight. Atlantis already traveling 3,200 miles an hour, 35 miles in altitude, 50 miles downrange. The propulsion officer reports the orbital maneuvering system engines have ignited. Atlantis kicking on its afterburners for one minute, 23 seconds for the final phase of powered flight. Atlantis, two engine towel. Presta ATO, 10 decimal 8. Presta Miko, 14 decimal 7. Presta ATO, 10 decimal 8. Presta Miko, 14 decimal 7. That's a good read back, Atlantis. Because of the slightly late launch time, Capcom Barry Wilmore reading up to pilot Doug Hurley the updated abort boundaries for Atlantis which is flying on the singular power of its three liquid fuel main engines, draining a half a ton of fuel per second from the shuttle's large fuel tank. Three and a half minutes into the flight, Atlantis traveling 4,200 miles an hour, 54 miles in altitude, already 120 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center. Three good main engines, three good auxiliary power units, three good fuel cells for Atlantis. Negative return. Negative return. That call from Capcom Barry Wilmore indicating that we're too high in altitude, too far downrange to return to the launch site in the event of an engine failure. Right However, Atlantis' like three engines performing perfectly. <laughs> wow. Four minutes, what 20 seconds into the flight. John Zarella listening in as well, and astronaut Katie Coleman is with us. Uh, Katie, in terms of what's happening now, what's going on? Well, they've already uh, gotten rid of the solid rocket boosters. We use up all the fuel, toss them off. Looks like they fall down, but they actually go up another 150,000 feet. Is that right? Because they're still on their way. And those things actually will land in the ocean vertically, really? get picked up, cleaned out, could be used again, but in this case, not necessary. I'm sure Last they'll pick time. them up and clean them out, though. 
and uh, now we're just waiting for main engine cutoff, which is going to be eight and a half minutes after launch. And I that means we've, you know, they've achieved orbit and they're on their way to space. I mean, I, you, you guys have seen this a lot. Uh, this is the first time I've actually been here for it. It is completely different. It is such a cool experience. The power of it, I mean, we are, how many miles away are we? About five. Five, miles, five miles away. Miles, yeah. The sound is, it, it, you uh, feel is deafening. It. Yeah, you feel it, like, go through you. And the light is so bright uh, from the, the, the boosters that you can barely look at it. I mean, it's it's such a searing searing heat. Television has never done it justice. I mean, that's clear. Yeah. That's right. Clear. But, you know, I, I just try to tell people that it's just it's like nothing you've ever seen. And, and I try to tell people that it's it's a big deal for people to leave the planet. Right. Even though it's gotten to be every day. I mean, that's what the space shuttle has given us is people go to space. But you really do feel that they are leaving the planet. I mean, you feel that yes. they're kind of like ripping a hole in the sky exactly it's uh, it's extraordinary they're, they're they're traveling now over seven thousand miles an hour already five and a half minutes into the flight incredible yeah just incredible no, um, it, and, and i mean to see that that column of of i it's just incredible it's really rather remarkable and, and it's different every time you say because you know it depends on the wind which way the wind is going right. the light the time of day you know how long you can see the shuttle it's always you know so every launch picture is going to be different and i think you'll look at everyone a little differently now the closest sound i can think of is and it's nothing it's not, it's like a pale comparison to it is when you know you hear a, a jet like breaking the sound barrier you know you hear the boom of a jet overhead but i mean that's it's nothing compared to this this is uh, I don't know how to describe it. You really just it. feel it through your whole body. Yeah, it's extraordinary. Carol Costello uh, is with uh, spectators on the beach. Um, Carol, from, from your perspective, uh, I mean, that, that sound, which doesn't hit, it takes a while for that sound to actually reach. What I'm sorry, Katie, what are we looking at? I'm just looking at, uh, your, you can actually see the main, main engine tank. Um, we're about to separate in a couple minutes, but you see the, the edge of the earth there. So now you see how high they are, because you don't just see whole earth behind them, you see the edge of the earth. To have gone that high that quickly is just extraordinary. I mean, we're all sort of still sitting here. It happened just seconds ago, and they're already... Look at now you can even just make out things on the Earth. Yeah, they're going to be in space in, like, a minute, minute and a half. And you can, I mean, are you looking out the window this when I mean, are these astronauts at this point even looking out the window, or do they have so many things going on that they're not paying attention? I'd say most of them have things going on, but, um, but if there's nothing going wrong, which on this flight we haven't seen anything go wrong, the mission specialists in the back can actually use the mirrors on their kneeboards to look out the overhead windows. And you can see the, the blue sky just change to the black of space. Any clouds just get shrink like little like cartoon things, just mm -hmm. really small. Right in about one minute from now is when they'll have main engine cut off and then they'll separate the giant external tank. At that point, you're in space, right? Absolutely. One minute. I mean, they're actually already in space, 50 miles, right. and you're in space. But that's the end of the powered flight, and, and that means we're going to get rid of the big fuel tank, don't need it anymore. And that's why you'll see the, the fuel tanks on the bottom there. You'll actually see that separate. The, the shuttle will fly away and then do a pitch maneuver so we can take photographs of that tank mm -hmm. and diagnose whether any pieces of the foam on the tank might have come off um, and, you know, and, and it caused damage. It doesn't look like it, but... Yeah, I just heard him say, you're, you're traveling about 15,000 miles an hour right now. Exactly. And when you hit Miko, main engine cutoff, you're at 17, over 17,000 miles an hour. It looks like you're standing still. <laughs> and I think this view that you have right now, I mean, is that you can see the Earth actually getting smaller. Mm. I mean, the Earth was big. We were right, they were right on the Earth, and now it's getting smaller and smaller. And how long will it take to actually get to the International Space Station? You could get there quickly, but the most the fuel efficient way it'll take about two days to, to Sunday catch up. morning is uh, the scheduled docking. Yep. All right, main engine cutoff has been confirmed. So now we're going to see. You can see it now. We're just watching the uh, separation. Any and this second. is loud on board. This is really loud. That's what I've heard. Explosive. Yeah. There's explosive charges, charges. that do the separation. So what is actually happening? Now standing by for external the, tank the, the tank is now, the shuttle is going to actually fly away from the tank there. So the tank stays in there one place, now. and now see? the shuttle is going, and the camera is on the tank. So mm. we see the shuttle wow. gracefully arcing away. Atlantis off the tank. Commander Chris Ferguson will be maneuvering Atlantis now into an orientation to enable Sandy Magnus so to capture digital still so imagery of the So a couple chances to look at the shuttle. So at this point, then, how does the shuttle maneuver? It's got uh, jets that use fuel that when the two kinds of fuel actually combine, they make a gas and that, that um, gives them propulsion. It's like a, a jet pack. But we've got them all over the shuttle so that we can maneuver it 
So now you're so seeing it can the move, So it can move in all different directions. Exactly. Yeah. So they're actually maneuvering the shuttle so that they can then turn around and look at the tank. And Sandy will be snapping picture after picture in detail up and down the tank. That's one way to sort of investigate how did asset go in terms of debris, mm -hmm. is to look at how did the tank fare. And then when the shuttle approaches the space station, the shuttle will sort of do a, 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 a belly flip in front of the space station. The station astronauts will photograph it. Extraordinary. Just incredible.